Hey guys, and I want to show you a few more problems of equilibrium in the y-axis, in the vertical. Let's get started. So, remember real quick, an object at equilibrium is at equilibrium when its forces cancel. Another thing to remember is that in that situation, your acceleration is zero. So, forces cancel and acceleration is zero. Remember also that weight is a force that acts on all objects that are near the Earth or any other planet, asteroid, the moon, whatever. Um, and we're always going to draw weight first. The reason for this is because weight always exists. Weight's just mg. Okay? And in most of the times, it's going to be going down. Now, the reason I put a little asterisk here is because even if you're far from the Earth, you're still going to be pulled on with some gravity, but we'll talk about that a little later. Um, the, another force you need to remember is normal. Normal acts on an object when the object pushes against the surface, so the surface pushes against the object, right? So we're going to draw normal last. Normal is just N. Uh, we're going to draw normal last because sometimes you won't have normal force, right? So let's do um, two quick examples here. For the following situations, draw a free body diagram and calculate all the forces acting on the object. So you push down on a 3 kilogram mass on a table with a force of 10. So I got a 3 kilogram object over here, chilling on a table, and you're going to push down on it with a force of 10. Now remember, I don't like drawing forces as pushes, I'm going to draw them as pulls, so I'm going to actually move this over here. F equals 10. The first force I'm supposed to draw is mg, uh, the force of gravity, weight, so it's going to be mg over here. mg is mass times gravity, so it's 3 times 9.8, and that gives us... 3 times 9.8 gives us 29.4 newtons, okay? Any other forces? Is there, is there a normal force here? Yes. Why? Because you're pushing against the surface, so the surface has to push back. Also, if you didn't have normal force, this would mean that the object would be accelerating down. If you only have forces going down, F, equal ma, F equals ma tells you that force equals mass times acceleration. So if the forces are down, the acceleration would have to be down. But I know that in this case, this object sitting on a table, so the acceleration is zero. It is at equilibrium. The forces have to cancel. So there, if there's two forces going down, there has to be one force going up to cancel that, and that's normal. If I'm pushing down with a total of 10 plus 29, 39.4, so normal has to react with 39.4 newtons, okay? In this case, normal equals mg plus f, or 39.4 newtons, because normal has to cancel both of those forces. So that's the quick way of doing this. You can just kind of look and say the force going up has to equal the forces going down, so that I have equilibrium. The long way would be to write that the sum of all forces equals ma, and I realize the acceleration is zero, so the right side of this equation is zero. There are three forces here, so I can do three little parentheses, and that adds up to zero. The forces are normal, which is going up, so I can make it positive, F, which is going down, and mg, which is going down. And now I can show you that normal equals positive F plus mg. So you can do it this way, right, basically by writing that the sum of all forces equals zero and working it out like that, or, or you can do it this way. You can say all the forces, the sum of all forces going up equal the sum of all forces going down, okay, which is basically what I did when I said this has to be 34 because it has to cancel these two guys. Now when you do this, you ignore the signs. So it's really the, just the magnitude of these forces. Okay, The magnitude of all the forces going up has to cancel all the forces going down. All right? So I want you to try this out. Pause the video and try this. Um, I'm going to draw this for you real quick before you do it. So I have a 2 kilogram object right here on a string. It's being, I'm sorry, it's actually being pulled up. Uh, it's on a table and it's being pulled up with a force of five, or you can call this a tension if you would like, doesn't matter, okay? So I want you to draw a free body diagram with all the forces, and I'm gonna keep going, but you should pause the video and try this yourself. So the free body diagram would look, um, I would have mg down, mg is two times 9.8, so this is 19.6, and the question here, that's the first force I draw, the question here is, are there any other forces, any other additional forces? Is there normal here? Well, if I'm pushing, if I'm being, if I'm pushing against the surface with 19, but being pulled up with a 5, 
this five is not enough to lift me off of the, off of the table. Um, in fact, there's, that means that because it's not enough, I'm still going to be pushing a little bit against that table. So there's still going to be a little bit of a normal force. Okay. The only difference is that setup here is a little bit different. Um, all the forces going up equal all the forces going down. So I can write N plus T equals MG. I know N, uh, I know T and MG, so I can find N. N is MG 19.6 minus T minus 5. So normal is 19.6 Newtons. Okay. That's the final answer, and I found all the forces. Now, one thing that I that I didn't do actually is I didn't draw the free body diagram exactly how it's supposed to be for either one of these problems. Remember, a free body diagram isn't supposed to be a box, it's supposed to be a dot. So technically, I gotta put a dot, gotta make a big dot because I have a bunch of arrows coming out of it. And this is N, and this is T, and this is MG. Now, if you wanna make this even more correct, you should draw the normal a little bit bigger than the tension to indicate that it's a stronger force, and the MG should be bigger than both of them. Okay, that's if your professor is really picky about these. So that is the free body diagram for this object. It looks very much like what I drew here. The only difference is that it's a dot instead of a box. Okay, so let's keep going. I hope you got that one right. Um, remember that when we're working with multiple objects, we want to begin with the simplest object. The object that has the least amount of things going on around it with the least amount of forces uh, acting on it. So it's usually going to be an object that is at the end of the problem or at the ends of the problem or at the edge. Okay. So in this case here, it would be the three. And in this case here, it would be the four. You want to start with those guys first. So very similar, I want to find, I want to draw a free body diagram for each and calculate all the forces. So let's start with the three. Free body diagram on the three would look like this. Let's do it right this time with a little dot. Um, first force I'm going to draw is an MG. MG. This is the MG of the three. And the mass of it is three kilograms. That's why I called it the three. Um, so this is 29.4 newtons. First force I draw MG. Next force, um, the only other force I have here is normal. So I do have a normal because this thing is sitting there. It's not going up or down, it sits there. So these two forces have to cancel. I hope you agree that normal has to be 29.4. These two have to be the same so that they cancel. Okay? Let's, and that's my two forces. Um, the free body diagram is this piece right here. Okay? Now let me do the four, do the four over here. The four has an MG, it's being pulled down by its own weight, but MG four, which is 39.2 Newtons. Did I get that right? Yep. And what else? Well, the three is on top of the four. So the MG of the three actually pushes down against the four as well. So if you're four, the MG of the three is pushing down against you, but I'm going to draw that as a pull down here. All right, let me erase this mess. So I'm going to draw this over here. And it's a little weaker of a force, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. This is MG of the three kilograms. I'm going to put the value over here to this side. We know this is 29.4. Any other forces? Well, there has to be a force balancing this stuff out because we know that this entire system is at equilibrium. It's not accelerating up or down. So there has to be a normal force also because I'm pushing against the surface so the surface pushes back, right? And again, I can say all the forces going up cancel with all the forces going down. So normal is mg3 plus mg4. It's just these two guys added together, which is 68.2. Newtons. Okay? So that's it for this one. I want you guys to try out part B. So pause the video, follow the steps, and I want you to draw a free body diagram for each one of these. And I want you to find these two tensions here. I'm going to call this one tension one, 
I'm gonna call this tension two because we're gonna do this question, this block first, and then that block. I want you to find all the forces, mg's, tensions, normals if you have any, etc. And by the way, the floor is somewhere down here. So you should pause the video, give this a shot. You know how this works. I'm gonna keep going, and but I hope you tried it. So here is the. I'm gonna start with the four. Um, by the way, I can do. I can kind of put a four kg here to signify that that's the four right there. I could have done the same here, three and four, okay? So here's a four kilogram force force I'm gonna draw on it, it's an mg. This is the mg of the four, which is four times 9.8, which is 39.2 newtons. Any other forces? Well, if you look at the four, it's sitting there, right? It's not accelerating up or down, so there has to be a force pulling it up. And that force is not normal. There is no normal in this problem because it's not touching the floor. That force is my tension one. And I know that these two have to cancel, so this thing as, is equilib at equilibrium, so this is 39.2 as well, okay? These two forces have to cancel. All right, so I'm done with this first one. Let's go to the three kilograms. So here's the three kilograms. I'm gonna draw a bigger dot just because there's bigger, more forces on it. The first force I'm gonna draw is the mg of itself which is three times 9.8, which is 29.4 newtons. What else? Um, if you are the three, you're also being pulled down by T1, and you're being pulled up by T2. Now T1, I already calculated, T1 is this, so I can just put it here, 39.2. And if this thing is at equilibrium, that means that the forces up cancel with the forces down. So T2 must be the addition of these two forces, 68.2 newtons. Okay? So that's it. That's why I had to work out the four first. I'm so yeah, the four first so I could find this T1, which I would then plug it in here. That's why you start from simplest from the edge and then you work your way up in this in this case, okay? If all you wanted to know is this T2 here, by the way, look at this T2, What's, what is it doing? It's holding the whole thing, right? So if all I wanted to find was T2, I could have said that I'm just hanging three plus four, seven, right? And then I would have an mg of seven times 9.8, which is 68.2, and then I would have a T2 of 68.2 because these have to be the same. And that answer um, would have been the same. So you can always combine objects. But here I was just working for looking for both T's and all the forces. So that's everything that you should have had there. I'm going to do one more example and then we're done. Um, yeah, I have a uniform 10 kilograms, 2 meter long chain. So a chain is kind of like a rope or string, it's holding something. But now it has a mass, so it's going to act as an object. And it's attached to the ceiling and supports a 20 kilogram object. So let me just draw um, a few pieces of the chain here. Six little chain thingies. Um, so I'm going to put a, it's holding a 20 kilogram object. And the floor is down here somewhere. Cool. And I want to know the tension at the top, bottom, and middle of the link. So it starts with, what is the tension here? What is the tension here? And what is the tension here? These tensions will be different because they're holding different amounts of mass, of weight, right? So let's start with the bottom right here. What is the tension at the bottom? Well, look at what it's holding. At that point, you're holding a 20 and that's it. You're right here. So T bottom, all that it's holding is a 20 kilogram. So the mg that it's holding is 20 times um, 9.8, and that's 196. So TB has to be 196. If you go to the top of the chain, you're holding the whole thing. So if you're at the top of the chain, you are holding the chain itself, which has a mass of 10 kilograms and you're holding the object, which has a mass of 20. So if you're here, tension top, you are holding both of these guys. So you're going up against a 196 newtons, that's the mg for this guy, 
and you're going up against the MG for the chain because you're holding that as well. So that's 10 times 9.8, 98. You're holding more weight, so there's more tension there. And this number is 294. Now, if you're in the middle of the chain, T middle, you are holding, you are in the middle of the chain. This is my single chain here. Um, if you're in the middle of the chain, what are you holding? You're holding T middle. Um, you are holding the 20 kilogram box. So you're going up against an MG of 196. Okay, you're holding a 20 here, but you're also holding half of the chain. So you're also pulling on a five kilograms of mass. So there's the mass of the chain right here, MG of the chain, which is five times 9.8, which is 49. So if I combine these two, the tension in the middle is gonna be 49 plus 196, and that's 245 Newtons. These things are all forces, so they're all Newtons. So again, the difference between um, when you have a rope, a chain, or whatever that actually has mass, it's gonna have different tensions uh, in a vertical situation. It's gonna have different tensions at different places because it has to hold its own weight as well, all right? So that's it for this one. Hope it makes sense. Let's go into the next one.